But next, Lord Mandelson's proposed bill to criminalise file sharing is deeply contentious. Not only could it change the lives of many musicians, writers, filmmakers and other creative people, it could also fundamentally alter the way in which most of us interact with culture via the web. Comedian and campaigner Mark Thomas investigates. The internet is probably the most singular innovative thing that will happen in our lifetime. It has completely transformed the way we bank, the way we shop, the way we relate to each other and communicate, the way we relate and communicate with government, the way in which we learn, the way in which we get news, the way in which we organise politically. But some people have not kept up. One of the most transformative things about the internet is it allows a massive exchange of information as pristine digital files, making songs and movies instantly and freely available. The music and the film industry have been slow to react to this brave new world and are now squealing they have lost hundreds of millions of pounds. Their traditional business model has been shattered as internet service providers, ISPs, allow copyrighted content to flow freely across their networks. Unable to now monetize their own products, the music and film industries have been lobbying hard for protectionist legislation. The government are introducing a digital economy bill and some, and I'm one of them, are saying that this is another example of the Labour government giving excessive powers to corporations and actually intruding on our privacy. What it does is it gives the film industry and the music industry the right to get your download record from your service provider and then for those bodies to actually seek a court order to get you cut off from the internet with a bare minimum of evidence being presented. At the heart of the bill being pushed through by Lord Mandelson are measures that aim to reduce illegal downloading by 70% using the ultimate sanction of disconnection. The proposed bill is dismaying some, but delighting copyright holders. We want to make sure that the creative industries in the UK have a, a sound base for the future. You know, if people can't be paid for their creativity, they're going to stop being creative. Broadly, what the bill is doing is saying, listen, ISPs, is you do have, it is via your tubes that these illegal downloads are happening in people's houses. We think that you should do something about it. If somebody is a repeat offender, they're told to stop, they do it again. They're told to stop again, they do it again and again and again and again. Is that ultimately there has to be some sort of stick to bang them on the head with to stop them from stealing things. Musicians Union tell me that something like 80, 85 percent of musicians in this country make less than 15,000 pounds a year. Well, they're making a bit less than they were last year and the year before. Because quite clearly, you're not getting paid if nobody's paying you. There's been a lot of talk in the music industry and pressure from the music industry saying this is really affecting artists, is it? Well, I think that's questionable. Um, it depends what kind of artist you are. Perhaps the high-end artists are losing out. But for people down my end of the industry, it helps. It spreads the word. You know, in, in the old days, when I read that um, Bob Dylan was inspired by a fellow called Woody Guthrie, I couldn't find a Woody Guthrie record anywhere in East London in 1974 now. The potential for artists is, is, is really incredible. And look at what comes into the charts now. Stuff comes into the charts that hasn't even been promoted by the record labels. Uh, they find this very, very frustrating. And, and until they understand that, that it's possible for, for them, as well as artists, to, to make a living in this world, you know, they've just got to adapt. But at the moment, they're not adapting. They're, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're forming a posse and they're going around looking for people to, to string up. We're not talking about taking one person off the internet. That's impossible to do. You have to take off everyone who lives at the end of that network connection. Uh, where I live, that's about eight people. Even, even if you identified the infringer correctly, it was the father in the sitting room or whatever it was, just because you've done that, it, it, you, know, you basically can then deprive all of the family of their internet connection, including all the kids and their education. So there's a lot of collateral damage that goes on. Uh, imagine that if Universal or EMI or any other big label made three false accusations of copyright infringement, right? So they three strikes, that we could go over to their offices with a big set of bolt cutters, go to Knightsbridge, and chop off their internet access. And for a period of one year, they could be the record label that does all of their business by fax and carrier pigeon. Right? It would be the corporate death penalty for them. That's what we're proposing to do to people who are accused, but not convicted, of file sharing and their families. 
like many laws, it's quite hefty, and in the middle of this one is actually Clause 17. Clause 17 allows the Secretary of State to change the law on copyright without having to put a new law before Parliament. It's proving to be the most controversial clause of the bill. None of us can predict in three years' time what's going to exist. And let's face it, iTunes didn't launch that long ago. The iPod did not exist ten years ago. It's an extraordinary thing. There is a particular bit of the bill, uh, technically referred to as Clause 17, that is in many ways trying to future-proof this legislation. That would allow, as technology develops, the Secretary of State to go back and amend the Copyright Act to try and take into account whatever developments of technology there might be. There no doubt will be other forms of this problem in the future, so we do need to provide legislation that's flexible enough to deal with those, and I think in Clause 17 of the Bill we've been able to do that. The real issue is that the Secretary of State can cut off someone's access for any consideration. It's not actually tied to copyright infringement, so we can see it being used potentially in other circumstances where someone's downloading something that the Secretary of State decides shouldn't be downloaded, and that's a real slippery slope. In the last past 10-15 years we've seen so much legislation passed on the basis that they won't use it in these ways. This is, you know, it's only intended for a particular purpose. Section 44 stop and search powers is a really good example of that. When it was introduced it was said, oh, it's only going to be used in limited circumstances, in limited time, in limited areas for terrorism purposes. And of course we've seen the whole of Greater London designated for the last nine years as a place where you can stop and search without suspicion. I mean, some people say this is, you know, this is copyright infringement. Why shouldn't you uphold the law? Well, we are upholding the law. The vast majority of customers are upholding the law. If music companies and film companies feel that some broadband customers aren't upholding the law, well, take them to court and use the court process to prosecute them. Don't use some sort of, you know, newfangled device that circumvents the normal, you know, laws of justice. The internet is used for everything. The internet's used for voting, it's used for pressuring your lawmakers, it's used for staying in touch with your family or getting an education or keeping in touch with the NHS and getting your health information and so on, which means that copyright has become a de facto regulator, not of the supply chain of the entertainment industry, but of education, health, um, social well-being, civic engagement, politics, and every other piece of our society. The problem is the pace of technology is so fast that some people are already saying the bill is virtually worthless and by the time it becomes law will be totally redundant. The people who are really genuinely in repeat infringers and really seriously want to do downloading will just disappear. They're building the technologies already. The technologies are available in places like Japan where these services, you know, where, where three strikes has been put in place. Um, they will disappear. They will continue to infringe and they'll be undetectable. Well, this is a simple app that I've downloaded on, a, on an Android phone. So if I search and let me pick up, for instance, yeah, a Lady Gaga song, so that's maybe pulling off a site in Mongolia, maybe pulling off a site in the UK, but the, the track's not illegal in that sense. So this, just with a mobile phone, you can get round this legislation? Yeah, or indeed, you could do this on your home broadband connection and just get round the legislation. You know, ultimately, the legislation's futile. Technology will always run ahead. I mean, you know, the, the, the Musicians' Union famously tried to ban the synthesizer because it was bad for music. You know, it's always, this has always happened. You know, the very first arguments about copyright they were around the point with piano. Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Yeah, they have, they have. I'd, I'll give them that. But it didn't work. We had to invent punk to deal with Emerson, Lake and Palmer. <laughs> Quite clearly, people want internet access. Quite clearly, people want music. I think there's a way to get them to pay for both at the same time. And I think ISPs should be out there partnering up with the music industry right now because actually our future is together. The undisputed free flow of information has been a net positive for the world. Um, and when you start to punish people for partaking of that, under, that, that, that free flow of information, you end up criminalizing everyday life. And that opens the door to arbitrary punishment. This is essentially a spat between the music and the film industry on one side and the internet service providers on the other, with the government thrashing around somewhere in the middle in the swamp of its own legislation. Both sides claim to represent the interests of the consumer and of the creative artist, and yet it will be the consumer and the creative artist that actually bear the brunt of this legislation. What will happen is that illegal downloading will continue. What will happen is that creative people will continue being creative. The world will not dry up of creativity but they will have just one more obstacle to get round, which has been laid down before them.
There's certainly some food for thought there. That bill is currently being debated in the House of Lords and could even become law before the next general election.